Before you read week 10, let's uh, look at some themes you'll notice emerging. Uh, week 10, we're going to be looking at Matthew 11 all the way through Matthew 20. So we're going to continue in the gospel of Matthew. The first thing I want you to notice is, is that we're going to be talking about who Jesus is and why he came. Um, Matthew 11, uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples. This is what we picked up last week. And uh, some of John's uh, disciples came to him and they asked him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? And this is what Jesus said. He said, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And he says, blessed is anyone who doesn't stumble on account of me. And we see that um, that really he's referring back to the prophecies about Jesus because they understood that the Messiah was going to come doing these kinds of miracles. But here's something that they didn't understand. And it's another theme you see all over the place. Uh, Matthew 12 uh, starts it off. Uh, some of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law said to him, hey, we want to see a sign from you, you know, like a sign that you are really from God. And here's here's what he says. This is what Jesus answers to them. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he says, as Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. And he's talking about, when he says the sign of Jonah, he's talking about the fact that he's going to die on the cross, um, which is not something that anyone expected. The disciples didn't expect it. The Pharisees didn't think that the Messiah would have to die. They imagined that he was going to be some military conquering hero, kind of like David. And so this is the last thing that they thought would be a sign of, of the true Messiah coming from God is that he would have to die. He says it again in Matthew 16. In fact, in, in, these, in these chapters from this week, you'll see that Jesus predicts his death three separate times. It, it says in verse 21 in, in Matthew 16, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And look at Peter's response to that. Peter took him aside and he began to rebuke him. He said, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Again, it didn't fit their picture of what they thought the Messiah was going to come to do. Jesus turned to Peter and he said, get behind me, Satan, you're a stumbling block to me. You don't have anything the, 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 in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And, and you can go on and read what he talks about taking up your cross and following Jesus. This, this was all a shock to, to Jesus' disciples, really to every Jewish person, because they didn't expect that the Messiah would come and that the Messiah would have to die. So notice that theme as you read these chapters. Another thing that you'll notice is, is in uh, Matthew 13, you'll notice you'll see some more parables of Christ. And again, parables can sometimes be difficult to understand. In fact, in Matthew 13, Jesus specifically says that. The disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and and uh, they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they will have will be taken from them. This is why I speak in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Um, and Jesus was just, he was talking about the importance of parables. Uh, again, that that uh, the, to me, the parable sort of highlights the fact that God's truth is so simple, but even sometimes uh, the simplest truths are difficult for people to grasp, especially pay attention to the religious elite, like the Pharisees, the ones who were supposed to have so much wisdom and knowledge. They were the ones that didn't get the parables because, um, that, well, partly because, as Jesus said, um, their hearts were hard and they, they didn't want to understand it. It was the simple people who understood it because God's truth is actually very simple. Remember that God's truth is very simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, and as you read, hopefully you'll understand some of those parables and have the eyes to to see and the ears to understand. And the last thing I just want to point out is in Matthew 18, it gives us some practical tips on what to do if someone offends you. Jesus says this, if a brother or sister sins in Matthew 18, 15, Go and point out their fault just between the two of you. And if they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every matter may be established by a testimony of two or three witnesses. And if they still refuse to listen, tell to the church. And if they refuse to listen to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. And he's talking to his disciples and, and telling them how to deal with sin in the church. 
basically, and I think there's some good lessons for everyone, even if you're not a church leader, I think the lesson is um, if you have, if someone sins against you, give them the courtesy of pointing it out to them. If they're going to be unrepentant about it, um, then you might have to take some other steps. But now, this is really good because Jesus is giving us a practical guide for how to deal with uh, with sin and how to deal with conflict. In fact, we use this all the time in church. This is something that we use in dealing with people who are uh, who who are uh, you know walking down the wrong path. We want to gently lead them toward repentance, and and if they refuse to, then then we want to be obedient to Jesus in the way He says to deal with it. So, just encourage you as you read week ten. Um, Just pay attention to these three themes as you go along.